play with Kafka. You can learn about that at kafka.apache.org. And uh, I think all we need to know about that today is you can think about it kind of like a, a queue. You can publish some messages to it and consume some messages from it. And one key difference, if you've used something like uh, SQS or RabbitMQ, <clears throat> is that uh, at least the way we are going to use this, it's going to store all of our messages. And when we read them, instead of deleting the messages, it simply remembers like an offset of where we are in the queue. <clears throat> And if we wanted to, we could go back to the beginning or something at a later time. And we are going to be consuming it with Node.js using a library called Kafka.js. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is some Kafka. I'm going to use Docker Compose to provide that for me. And I've got a project where I have done this before, so I'm just going to grab that real quick <clears throat> as an example. So uh, if you're not familiar with Docker Compose, go read up on Docker, uh, but it's going to just allow us to, in a lightweight way, run Kafka. And Kafka, at minimum, needs Zookeeper to help it run. <clears throat> and here's just a minimal chunk of code we can just copy right in to bring Kafka up for us. Then I have this little plugin to VS Code that shows me what other stuff is running that might conflict with this. I'm just going to shut it all down. Make sure I don't have any conflicts. And then let's run Docker Compose to bring it all up. <clears throat> Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is to uh, consume something from this. And we're going to use this library as we talked about. They've got some great examples here how to do that. So let's just work our way through that. <clears throat> we're going to install Kafka. I have to init my project first. I'm just going to do it the fastest way possible there. The Y flag just says answer yes to all the questions and just get it done. And then let's run this yarn command to install Kafka.js. <clears throat> and now let's start building out just some little file, index.js, how about that? And we're gonna talk through this just a little bit. We're gonna import it. All it needs to know is where to find Kafka. We don't even have to give it two brokers. Uh, in, in our case, we only have one. So let's go ahead and do this much. And let's see what we're calling ours. <coughs> so ours is just gonna be called, uh, oh sorry, it's gonna be running on localhost on port 9092. So we'll just change this to localhost on 9092 and get rid of the other one. Clanny ID doesn't really matter just for our little local example. 
And let's go ahead and do exactly what they're saying here. Let's start by passing the message. So in Node, you can't await something at the module scope like this. So we need to wrap this. Common way I like to do this is to just create a function called main that is async. And then we can just call main. And now inside of this function, we'll be able to uh, <coughs> do asynchronous things, call await. So this is just going to connect and send one message to this test topic with the value of that and then it's just going to disconnect. Um, you have to create topics typically but <clears throat> In the docs here, I'll go look it up later, but uh, there's a configuration where you can tell the weather to just automatically create topics if they don't exist, and the default is true. So that's what's going on here is it's just going to auto-create this on the fly because it doesn't exist yet, and that's why this send should work, expecting it to work. <coughs> However, we're really going to have no proof that this actually worked other than that it won't blow up. Uh, but hey, whatever, that's good enough for now. Let's just try that. So node index.js. See what happens. Oh, we got an error. Um, so this happens because we're creating a new topic. And uh, there's no leader for the topic partition yet because Kafka is a distributed application and there's no like single node that's the primary point of contact because what if that single node dies? So just kind of standard practice here in distributed applications is that all the nodes are somewhat equal and they kind of have to like <clears throat> uh, work with each other to elect like a a leader for now and then if that leader if that node dies or something then they'll just elect a new leader and so it looks like we're getting an error saying that a leader hasn't been chosen yet so that's why we can't connect um, I was surprised though because I, I thought in the past when I'd done this that uh, it would just kind of hang out here for a while waiting for that leader to be chosen before giving up so quickly uh, but you can see here that the second go around, I didn't change anything and it just worked this time. <clears throat> so that's consistent with what we're expecting here, that we just kind of waited a minute and then uh, the leader was chosen. If we had like actually gone in and created the topic a more formally correct way or whatever and just waited a second, it would have had a, had time to, to take care of that. And that's just a one-time thing that's not going to keep happening ever again. You know, typically you create a topic and then uh, you don't run into this problem anymore. So in theory we've got two messages in there. <clears throat> It'd be nice if we could confirm that the messages are actually in there. Uh, and I think maybe I'll show you later there's some uh, lower level command line utilities in Kafka. Oh heck, let's just, let's just go explore that. Um, so docker compose and in docker compose we've got this Kafka image and we want to just we want to like shell into it. So I'm going to do exec Kafka. So saying I want to I want to run something inside my existing running Kafka image, and what I'm going to run is just sh. I just want to open up a shell so that I can just poke around. <clears throat> and then if I go into I don't know where the heck is it. It's probably in like user bin. Yeah, there's a bunch of Kafka stuff. That's where it is. Um, I don't have all these memorized, but I'm pretty sure one of these allows me to just like read messages from a topic. <coughs> so let's see. Console consumer. That sounds about right. 
uh, help. This will tell us how to use it. <coughs> so we're gonna have to leave, definitely gonna need to tell it the topic. Let's start putting this together just in like a text editor. Arrow is not doing what you would expect. Okay, and the topic was test topic. Uh, maybe that's all we're gonna need. I wonder. I think we have to give it the Bootstrap server. Try it without just for fun, just to prove that we actually need it, but I'm pretty sure it does not assume localhost, and so it's just gonna be like, where do I connect? Yeah, usage error. Bootstrap server is required. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> and that should be just like when we're connecting to Node, which just wants this broker. And the reason they say bootstrap server is because, uh, if I understand this correctly, let's say you've got like a whole bunch of nodes running Kafka and they're all working together. You don't have to list out all of them. You can just list, you can just connect to one. And then after connecting to the one, it will inform your client about the rest of the cluster. Um, so we just need something. We just need like an entry point here. Um, Although in their example, they used more than one broker for the initial connection. Honestly, I, I don't understand why that's helpful. I might need to do some more learning there. <clears throat> uh, so let's try this. I'm just doing something. But I'm not seeing the messages come out. Oh, if the consumer does not have an established offset, sort of the earliest. I wonder if this doesn't happen by default. <coughs> if this works, let's just try it first and then I'll explain what the heck's going on here. Yay, that was it. Okay, so. Quick little lesson here. We talked about when you publish messages, let's say we published message one, message two, message three, and these are in order, right? And the Kafka stores them with an offset. So this is message, I think it's zero based. So that's message zero, that's message one, that's message two. <clears throat> and as a consumer, uh, you just, you say, hey, give me some messages, Kafka. And it actually keeps track of you as a consumer. It keeps track of what offset you're on. And when you're a brand new consumer, apparently if you don't say otherwise, it assumes that you wanna start listening on the end. So you're not gonna get any messages there <clears throat> uh, until a new one gets published. But if you say from beginning, then it'll go all the way back. It actually sets your initial offset to negative one uh, so that you'll start before this and then get get through those. So uh, I'll put this in the readme. Um, I always put all this code that I'm working on out on uh, GitHub. <clears throat> so I'll put, a, I'll put a link to that. And useful commands like that I'll include in like a readme or something so that when you look at this code later you can you don't have to like type it out of uh, the video. <coughs> Read messages from directly from Kafka. First we did docker compose to shell in. And once we were in, we ran that. Oh, actually, 
What directory are we in? That was in the user bin. Cool. All right, so we know it's working. Now let's just try to do the same thing in JavaScript. So they're using their console consumer. <clears throat> and for that, I'm just gonna go back to their code here. They give a consumer example right away. I wish my code was auto formatting. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I don't know if that's something you like, but that's really my preference to not be worrying about formatting of your code like ever. So I use a plugin called Prettier. <clears throat> you just come over to extensions and search for Prettier, and you'll see it here. There you have it installed. And at bare minimum, I just need to <coughs> enable that for the project here. Uh, so I'm going to do, in VS Code anyway, it's Command Shift P to open the command palette, and then I can go to what? Uh, settings, workspace settings. Let's do that. And I'm going to search for format on save and check that. And now when I save this thing, it'll just automatically look pretty. Don't get mad at me for semicolons if you're a semicolon hater. I don't like them, I don't hate them, I just don't care. You know what, I'm, I'm just happy that I don't even have to care. Type them or not type them, I don't care, they'll get added for me. Okay, so this, uh, this is just going to let our production completely finish and then create a brand new consumer. And that consumer is going to subscribe to this test topic from beginning true. So notice that flag again. And then it doesn't actually start reading messages yet. Um, we have to call run first. And the reason for that is a single consumer can actually subscribe to multiple topics. So this, this little architecture, the way they have it up, it allows you to subscribe to a whole bunch of topics and then you start listening. And then in each message, you'll get uh, favorite messages from any of the topics that you subscribe to. <clears throat> uh, since we're just subscribing to the one topic, we don't really need to do anything with the topic. And uh, partition, let's just give it like a two minute version of this. No, 30 second, let's do 30 second. Um, when you publish messages to Kafka, they get assigned to a partition. And uh, a consumer can only read from a single partition. And so, uh, sorry, that's not true. A partition can only be consumed by a single consumer, but a cons single consumer can consume more than one partition. You just can't split partition across multiple consumers. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about that. The library just takes care of that for you. But So if you ever need to know like which partition this was coming from, you can do that too, but let's just look at the message. And all we're gonna do is console log out the message and uh, what else? Do we care about anything else? I don't think we care about anything else. Let's just run it and see if it works. Um, mm, there is something weird here. When do we stop? Is this thing just gonna go forever? Let's we'll see what happens. I think it's just gonna like never stop running because you have to call disconnect to make it stop, I think. <clears throat> Yeah, so it, we, sh we have four messages in there now, and it's just gonna keep listening forever. If we published another one, then we'd see it come through. In fact, we can, we can just do that. We can uh, change the code here for a second to not do any more consumption stuff. And we're just gonna do node index.js. That should cause another one to get published, which will show up on the left. Bam, there we go. <clears throat> Uh, okay, I think that's it. It's good enough for our minimal example here. Maybe in a future video we'll, we'll build upon this and do something more meaningful.